kind of like the deals up there. You can mute your audio and turn off your video uh, until the question and answer. You can use the chat at any time uh, to ask a question during the presentation. And the handout uh, is out on the PC Club website and the meetings past meetings file. And then Jim will probably add it to the chat after a few minutes uh, to give people uh, time to, uh, to log in there. <clears throat> So maybe we'll get going. Uh, okay. Agenda. Uh, we'll cover some club stuff first, and then we'll get to our main topic. Uh, future meetings. There is a Max SIG coming up this Friday, February 23rd. And I think Mike did just publish uh, an update to the, uh, to the SIG, but I don't have the information here. But usually he's talking about current events, uh, what's happening there. Uh, uh, maybe the European Union trying to sue Apple for uh, 550 uh, 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 million there. Uh, that may be in there. Uh, and then our next meeting for question and answer will be March 5th, uh, where we have our hour session. If you do have any questions, you're uh, welcome to join us for that and ask them or just listen in. And then our meeting next month uh, will be March 20th, and uh, you won't have to put up with me then. Uh, Jim uh, uh, Beardsley had graciously uh, 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 agreed to give a presentation, and uh, he's titled it, Our Pitcher's Boring. And uh, maybe it should be uh, how you can make your pictures not as boring. <laughs> uh, but uh, he'll talk about tips to take better pictures. He'll talk about uh, apps that you can use to improve your pictures and then uh, editing tools and apps in general there. So uh, Jim's I, a, I wonder if that's supposed to be, are your pictures boring? I, had, I asked him there and, and uh, this is what he came up with, but you're right. Okay. You're right. Uh, All uh, right. He's uh, if if Jim has presented before on on the topic and as a member of the the uh, uh, photo club at 3M and uh, uh, does take a lot of photos and that, so it's nice to get his perspective there. Okay. Uh, these are the officers. Uh, Jim is our president. Linda is our vice president. Uh, Paul is our membership secretary. Paula is our treasurer. Chuck is our recording secretary. Uh, Mike is our Max SIG director. Andrew is our communication coordinator. And uh, I'm Tom Kreitzer. I'm the director at large. And uh, we couldn't do it without some of the volunteers and that. So we want to give a little thanks there. Members old and new, you can pay your dues to Paul. Uh, Paul will send you out an email if you're a current member uh, when your uh, membership is expiring. And uh, uh, we do it on a month-to-month -month basis. So uh, everybody's a different month depending on when you joined. And you'll get an email. But certainly if you uh, are changing your email, uh, be sure and let us know because that's the way we send out notices like for this meeting and that's the way we keep in touch. If you have suggestions for topics, you can email your ideas or talk to a board member. We just got done in uh, the end of December with our uh, uh, yearly uh, survey and we got a lot of good feedback and that's where uh, Jim uh, Beardsley had agreed to give the presentation and uh, we uh, ranked a number of uh, topics, and uh, we'll use that to uh, to decide on future topics and uh, what to uh, present there. Uh, but we're always looking for people to volunteer to present on hardware or software, maybe something that you use at uh, work or something that you use at home. And if you don't want to present, I know a lot of people uh, uh, get anxious presenting, uh, you can write a short, meaning a sentence or two, or a long article, and we'll include it in our monthly eBytes newsletter. So if you just got a new uh, computer, or you found a piece of software, or something that you found interesting, uh, drop drop any of us a line. We'll get it in our monthly uh, eBytes there and share it with the club. 
Uh, we do have a website. Uh, the link is always sent on the emails that we send out. You can get the past meetings, uh, the slides and the handouts. Uh, we usually try and record everything. So this meeting is being recorded. Uh, that'll be put out there uh, in the next day or so. Uh, we also have a deal section, our eBytes newsletter. And again, the link is on all the emails that we send out. Okay. We'll start with a little humor, but it's really not, not humor. It's words of wisdom. So if you come away with anything out of this presentation, remember that passwords are like underwear. Don't leave them lying around. Change them regularly. And don't share them with anybody. So those are words of wisdom for everybody on, on your password. Okay, let's get into our topic, which is security and passwords. Uh, by myself, Tom Kreitzer. Security is a combination of safe computing practices and security products. Uh, some people think that just because they have an antivirus or they have a uh, certain software installed that they're protected, but uh, most of the breaches and most of the problems occur uh, with the human side of it, not with uh, the antivirus and some of the other things. And, and we'll talk about all that. No product that you buy or install can or ever will provide complete security. It has to be that combination of computing practices. You, as a user, need to be a, careful and aware of what you do and the products that you use. If you're not part of the solution, you are the problem and hackers will break into your accounts. This is new, uh, pass keys, and we'll be talking about pass keys uh, in a little bit after we talk about password managers. Uh, and they're starting to replace passwords. So everybody hates passwords uh, and pass keys is, uh, going to solve some of that problem, and we'll talk about that. The average person today has 100 accounts and passwords to manage. And when I tell people this figure, they go, oh, I don't have 100 accounts. And I say, well, let's start listing them, because uh, you've got your banks maybe that you deal with. You've got your email. Then you start looking at companies that you deal with and, and all these things. And pretty soon, uh, people do have between 50 and 100. Uh, so we do accumulate a lot of accounts and passwords over time. Most people, uh, so when I help out people or I go to work with them, uh, uh, frequently I'll go to work with them and that may require us to uh, log into an account or to change something uh, and we have to get the password. Well, they either can't find their password, they're typing in old passwords that they had, the, uh, most people would get a failing grade of F for what they do today. So we can all do better, including myself. This I thought was an interesting graphic here. Uh, so this is a, a picture of the human brain here. And on the left side, uh, we have what, what you know, and then we have on the right side what you do. And so uh, you understand the good password behavior should look like, and then here's some uh, statistics. 59% of us know that a secure password is important. 91% of us understand the risk of reusing passwords. Two out of three of us are fearful of password hacking. 75% of us consider themselves informed on password best practices. 72% consider their passwords sufficient protection for their online information. So that's what we think. And so, yeah, you know, we've talked about it quite a bit in the PC Club, and uh, certainly you hear about stuff in the news and things like that. So we all know about the stuff that we should be doing. Unfortunately, what the reality is what we do yet we continue to exhibit poor password habits. 41% of us choose a password that is easy to remember. 
That's not good. 61% of us use the same or similar passwords. You should never do that. 55% of us do not uh, do it even though we understand the risk. So that's really not good. Uh, this is uh, interesting statistics on generations. Uh, what generations are the worst in uh, doing these things? Well, millennials, 65% of them are, are the worst in using the same password. 52% uh, for the Gen X, baby boomers 45. But even 45 is too much. It should be zero. This number should be zero. Uh, then uh, we recognize that, well, uh, maybe if we're doing banking, uh, so this is a little money here, on our banking, uh, we create a stronger password on our banking. If we're shopping, we maybe 43% of us uh, have a little stronger one there, 31% uh, on social media, and then the rest 20%. Uh, you rely on personal information to create your password, create and remember your password. So people are using uh, passwords that they've either set up a number of years ago, never changed, uh, things like that. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, 40, roughly 47% of us have that problem. However, women are more susceptible to uh, to creating passwords uh, with names or things that they can remember, which they should. 39% uh, for men. Uh, the most used passwords that people uh, put in their passwords are 47% uh, put uh, personal information, family names, initials, uh, streets, uh, things like that in there. 42% uh, use significant dates or numbers, 26% uh, use pets names, 21% use birthdays, 14% hometown, 13% school mascots. And there's there's a whole list. So if you were a hacker and I was trying to get into your account, I, I can automatically have a program go through with public information about you and try and guess your password. And it has a pretty good chance uh, with a lot of people because their passwords are very easy to break. Okay, why do you need a password manager? So first we'll talk about a password manager. In the past, uh, I uh, recommended uh, uh, using password managers in that, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. And I recommended people use it. But today... And most of the articles that you'll read and stuff like that, they say everybody must use a password manager. It's not optional anymore because we all have more passwords. Those passwords do have to be very long, strong, and unique. And the only way they can be long, strong, and unique is to use a password manager. Using other methods, like putting them down in a notebook, Using Post-its, although we work for 3M or have a pension from 3M, uh, we don't want to promote the use of, uh, of Post-it notes to store your passwords. Uh, some people will put them in spreadsheets. Some people will put them in documents. Uh, there's always problems with any of those solutions. So you must be using a password manager. So what are the advantages and features and functions that you can uh, uh, get out of using a password manager? Well, you don't have to remember each password. So the passwords that you do have on your accounts, they can be unique. So you're not using them from site to site or uh, things like that. They're long uh, and they're strong, made up of letters, numbers, characters, no meaning whatsoever to them. Uh, so there's there's a that's a major uh, improvement there. Uh, the other thing is a password manager uh, can be available on all your devices. So your phones, your tablets, your laptop, your desktop. We all have more devices, and that means logging on and logging off and uh, things like that. Now those these passwords and accounts can be available anywhere at any time. And like I say, when I go and help people, I don't know how many times I've tried to help people and 
their notebook or they've forgotten what their password is. It's, it's at home somewhere in a desk, uh, but they don't have it with them. You need to have your passwords. You need to have your accounts. You need to have this stuff with you there. And then strong passwords can be generated for you. Uh, this is a frustration uh, I mentioned uh, when I go and help people. And uh, frequently, we may be uh, setting up a new account because maybe they installed a new app or something like that. And it gets to the creating the uh, uh, account, and they have to put in a password. And they have to think, and they have to think, and they have to think. It, it, it can take them minutes to come up with a password. Whereas if you're using a password manager, you go into that password manager, get a randomly generated uh, list of numbers and letters and things like that that is secure. Bing, bang, boom, you're, you're, you're done there. Uh, these uh, password managers can also help you change your passwords and they'll also track your old passwords. You can also document things like uh, typically if it's a bank account or uh, uh, email or stuff like that, you have challenge questions and other notes related to the account. Uh, so it gives you a place to put all that down instead of putting it in a little notebook or a post-it or stuff like that. Uh, it's safer than storing a password manager. is safer than storing your accounts and passwords in a browser. So a number of the browsers now will pop up and say, do you want me to save your, uh, your password in that? Well, uh, that's better than putting it on paper, but a password manager whose sole feature and function is to manage your passwords is a much better uh, method to manage the password. Okay, so now that I've convinced you that you need a password manager, uh, if you're looking or comparing password managers, what are the things that you should look or compare? Well, uh, one of the things is cost. Uh, in some cases, the password managers, you're paying per device. Uh, the limited uh, free version uh, may have uh, limits on the devices, may come with ads. Uh, and then also what devices or browsers does the password manager support? Then uh, uh, almost all of them have automatic capture. So if you are setting up a brand new uh, account, it'll automatically set up an entry in your password manager. It'll capture your username and password so that you don't even have to enter it. Once you've entered it into a password manager, uh, the next time that you go to that site, you want to have automatic replay. That's where it's going to enter your password and log on information for you. So some of them are a little more automatic than others, or some only work with certain things. There's, there's options in these different password managers. Another option is uh, filling in web forms. And typically on a lot of these sites, they're asking you questions, putting in your uh, things like a name and an address and a phone number and uh, social security, uh, even credit card information. Uh, so the better password managers will also let you store all this information so that uh, it just makes it easier uh, when you go out to these various sites and have to enter that information. Uh, most of them are also retaining a history of your passwords in case you need an old password after making a change or a question there. Uh, typically, they'll also support multiple identities. Uh, that can be multiple profiles for accounts, and you select which one to use. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, when I give a demo there. Strength report, uh, it'll tell you how strong your passwords are and it'll help you improve uh, your passwords and uh, things like that. Uh, most of them now also support two-factor authentication, uh, whether that's using biometric, uh, which would be your face, your fingerprint, a gesture, uh, a pin. Uh, it could be SMS-based, uh, texting you a code or a number. Uh, could be using uh, packages like Google Authenticator or something else. 
the passwords work a little bit differently on tablets and phones, uh, and typically there's packages then that support that uh, where uh, it'll store, store the uh, information for these apps also. Another important feature is the ability to import your password. So you may already have your password stored in another package or in the browser itself uh, or in some competitor software. Uh, you want to be able to bring those in so that you don't have to uh, uh, retype them or reset up uh, every, you know, those different accounts and passwords that you have. The opposite of the import is to export. Uh, so uh, once you start loading up this password manager, you also want to uh, save that information in case uh, there's some kind of problem or the company goes out of business or you get locked out of the account. Uh, you want to make sure that you can export your data. Uh, and there's different formats to export it in and different ways to save it. Another uh, option if you, uh, uh, that a lot of people don't think about, unless you have a password manager, is you can do, start doing more secure sharing. So I can share my password with other, people's, uh, with other people. I can uh, text message uh, people and use encryption, or I can uh, uh, send and receive and lock down documents to protect it. Uh, usually that's all built into the password manager. And then another one is a digital legacy. Well, we're all getting older, and at some time, uh, or if we get hit by the bus, uh, how's the person going to get access uh, to our accounts and information out there? So uh, you do want to think about uh, down the road or if something bad happens there. Uh, whether it's uh, a wife, a spouse, kids, uh, whoever in, is inheriting those accounts, uh, things like that. And then secure online file storage. Save and share your files or documents, things like wills, passports, etc. Okay, uh, what I use, uh, I use Bitwarden. Uh, in the past, uh, started out recommending the uh, password manager LastPass. Uh, and I used to recommend them up until 2021. Then they changed their policy for their free version that you could only use it on one device. So if you wanted to use it on your phone, you could, but you couldn't share the password then with your laptop or desktop or tablet there. Uh, so when they changed their policy, that's when I changed uh, to Bitwarden and uh, used the free version of Bit Bitwarden. I use the free version of Bitwarden. Uh, there's the website. Uh, it has all the features that I need. You can store an unlimited number of passwords and sync them across all of your devices. Bitwarden has native apps for Windows, the Mac OS, Linux, Android, and the Apple iPhone iOS operating system. Bitwarden has browser extensions that also support the most popular browsers, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Opera, and Safari. You can enable multi-factor authentication via an, uh, via an authenticator app with the free version. So that's not an advanced feature. There's, there's a ton of features in the free version. Uh, later, I'll be talking about pass keys after we get done talking about password managers here. And Bitwarden uh, does support pass keys and the syncing of pass keys. Uh, when I converted from uh, LastPass to Bitwarden, I exported my LastPass accounts and passwords and imported them into Bitwarden with no trouble in under two minutes. So very easy to do uh, uh, to move, move my passwords. There is a premium version where you can pay uh, $10 a year. I don't, I don't uh, pay the $10 a year because the free version does everything that I need it to do. Uh, but the free version, if you want some of the other features that it supports, like one gigabyte of encrypted file storage, uh, two-step login, uh, uh, YubiKey uh, is a physical... Uh, uh, key uh, that you plug into a USB port uh, to uh, give you extra security. 
So there's some things like that. You can get vault health reports and emergency access if you need these features. Okay, let's go and uh, do a little quick demo here. One second, let me get my information here and let's go to the browser. Oh, where am I here? Okay, so here I'm in the browser and I'm showing in the browser, this is the Chrome browser. And what I've done in the Chrome browser is I have installed Bitwarden and Bitwarden will install an extension. If you're familiar with uh, uh, Chrome extensions, uh, it's additional code and features and functions. In this case, there's an icon that'll put up on, it'll put up on your toolbar here. And uh, so that's what we're going to use here. The account that I'm going to use uh, uh, in the password manager is kind of a demo account that I set up uh, for uh, the PC club uh, uh, because I'm not going to be showing my personal information or unlocking it. Uh, so uh, I don't necessarily have that many passwords stored in here, but you'll get the idea of how things work here. And uh, Again, this is a Chrome extension. Uh, you may or may not be able to see, but this uh, this device here or, uh, looks like a little shield. And then it's got a padlock, and that padlock means that currently Bitwarden is locked. Uh, so when my machine is booted or I start up a browser or that, uh, Bitwarden is locked. It's not automatically going to fill in passwords. It's not going to do things uh, uh, there. Uh, and that's that's a good practice because uh, if your laptop was stolen or you're in a coffee shop or something like that, you don't want somebody uh, having access to all your passwords. So this is locked. Uh, the way I unlock it here is I, I can just click on this icon here. Uh, and then it's asking me for my master password. I'm going to put in my master password. And then I click the unlock button here. And now uh, this extension has got a little pop-up window here. And this little pop-up window uh, lets me search in Let here. So, oh, getting a little feedback there. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you can mute your uh, deal if, it, if you do have uh, your mic open. Uh, but yeah, this will this will pop up a little screen here. And this little screen here uh, will quickly cover uh, some of the things here. Uh, because I'm on a Google screen right now, uh, the current active screen is a Google, it's recognizing that if I wanted to log in or change accounts or things like that, that uh, it's uh, using a Google account here. And I could, uh, I could change things there if I wanted. Some of the other uh, features and functions that you have is uh, mentioned uh, the ability to put in credit cards, uh, credit card information with the number, uh, the uh, uh, the codes, uh, things like that. Uh, uh, you can put all those into uh, into the package here. So you can put the number, you can put the expiration, you can put the security code, and uh, then you could use that on any site to uh, to log in. Also, you have identities, and you can set up one or more identities. Uh, the identities, uh, uh, excuse me here, I clicked on the wrong thing here. The identities here uh, uh, is uh, where I can put in information. So I can put in addresses, social, social security number, phone number, other, other pieces of information. I can actually add in custom fields in here. And it'll automatically try and fill in those fields for me when I'm on certain screens. So that can be a very nice feature. Again, you don't have to use some of these features if you don't want to, but they're built into this free version of the password manager there. Uh, so that's the first tab. Uh, the next tab here uh, we'll go to is the uh, vault. Uh, this is where all of my uh, accounts and passwords are stored. And you can break them out into folders. 
and these folders uh, so you can have any number of folders or uh, these folders if you've attended some of our other presentations on how to organize your email how to organize your bookmarks how to organize your hard drive these are general categories uh, dining health uh, identity investments media so you can set up uh, as many as many in there and you can start putting in uh, organizing your passwords in your account you don't have to use folders if you want to put in a hundred uh, accounts without folders you can put in a hundred accounts without folders uh, the next thing here is this send this is a way to send messages or files to people uh, encrypted uh, so if you want to securely share information or share a password with somebody instead of sending it in a text message or in an email that a hacker may see uh, you can send it uh, in the application right here. Uh, this next uh, icon here is the generator, and a generator is kind of like it sounds. It'll generate passwords for you. You can tell it uh, whether it's a password or a username that you want to generate, whether it uh, uses a phrase or, or a password, a jumbled bunch of letters. If I want a phrase, there's a phrase that it's making there. Uh, also, you have a ton of options down here. You can set the length. You can uh, say the minimum. You can uh, upper and lower case if you want that. Uh, special characters, the number of letters. So the generator, you can get it to uh, set any any way that you want, any length that you want. And uh, if I wanted to copy this and use it somewhere, I could put it in uh, and and use it there. Uh, the last uh, field here is settings. Uh, this is where uh, there's uh, there's probably about uh, 40 settings or, or stuff like that that can be set. Um, and we'll talk about some of the changes that I recommend uh, later there. Okay, let's see. Okay, so uh, that's that's kind of the features that are here. Uh, to use this, you can use it a couple of different ways. To use uh, a password manager, uh, one of the ways here is, uh, let's say I want to go out to the Starbucks website and I have a Starbucks account and password. Uh, I, if I had bookmarks, I could navigate out that way for Starbucks. Or uh, I've got an entry in here that I can use and I can go up here to this search and I can S-T-A-R uh, and there's uh, uh, the account and password that I've saved for Starbucks. And uh, with, with this, uh, I can click on this and it'll launch me and take me to the Starbucks website and automatically fill in the information. I could also just copy the account, copy the password, uh, and I could copy the ver verification, but let's say we want to launch. This will launch the Starbucks website. So it's opening up the Starbucks website, and it automatically filled in this information. Uh, my account and password that are stored in my password manager. Uh, you can see up here the uh, icon uh, for Bitwarden has changed and has the number one showing. Uh, the number one means that I have one entry in my password manager that is used for this site. Uh, and so if I had multiple accounts uh, for Starbucks, one for the PC club, one for myself, uh, one for my dad, uh, one for my kids, uh, I, this number would be higher. Uh, so that's where you can set up multiple accounts for Starbucks and uh, manage all those uh, with Bitwarden there. But in this case, we have just one. Uh, so uh, oh, let me get rid of that. Uh, so we can, uh, we can sign in and we'll go down here and sign in. Okay, and you can see it signed, signed me in. I didn't have to copy, I didn't have to paste, I didn't have to enter my account, I didn't have to enter my password, didn't have to do anything. The password manager kind of handled all of that. 
And that information came from uh, the, the entry. So if I go up here and click, uh, it's kind of telling me again that there's one uh, uh, entry in my password manager that uh, equates to this website. And this is the information Starbucks. Uh, I can view the information that's stored out there by clicking on this. This is the information that it has. I could manually copy it and paste it if I had to, or if I wanted to see what the password is, I can do this to toggle. There's the password. Everybody can write that down. Uh, send money into this uh, demo account uh, for Starbucks if you want. Uh, so this is this is uh, information here. This is the folder where I'm organizing it. I'm putting it in the dining. This is where uh, I mentioned that you can put in challenge questions. This site doesn't have challenge questions, but if you did, you can put in any kind of notes in here that you want. Uh, you can also fill in a number of uh, other fields there. Uh, and so it makes it easy, easy to set up and easy to manage there. Uh, and because the password, because a password manager is, uh, has the Starbucks URL uh, in here, starbucks.com, this means that it's only going to fill in the password automatically when I'm at the official starbucks.com. If I got an email from Starbucks uh, that said, click on this, uh, and log in or change your information and it was going to a scammer site, it wouldn't automatically fill in. So this is where a password manager can actually give you more protection than, uh, than if you had it in a notebook or anywhere else there, you'd just be entering that information. This gives you an additional level of verification that you're going out to the site that is the valid site uh, that you originally created the account from. So you can you can put that uh, information in there. Uh, you can edit it, and when you edit it, uh, again, I could add, if there were multiple uh, sites that I wanted to use this account on, I could add another site in here. Uh, up here in the password, uh, you can see here's where I could automatically generate there. Do I want to overwrite uh, what's already out there? I can say yes, and that's where I can make a new password, uh, and it'll save it in here. And in some cases, it'll try and change it on the on the uh, uh, Star Starbucks site here. If it can change it, it'll change it. If it can't, that's where you're going to have to manually go into your account and change it to this new password that we set up. But I'm going to cancel here. So you can make changes uh, and save your information there. Uh, let's see. Let's do a cancel. This also has, uh, we'll show you your history, uh, when it was created, when you last updated the password. In this case, uh, April 3rd of 2022. Password history, I can see what the passwords were and when they were changed. Uh, so you have a lot more information uh, that you may not have uh, if you're doing stuff in a spreadsheet or, or uh, other systems there. Okay, let's see. Uh, so if I, if so we launched Starbucks from Bitwarden, but I can launch Starbucks from anywhere. Uh, so let's say I just did a, a search, a Google search for Starbucks, and uh, I want to go into Starbucks. I can click on Starbucks here. And if I click on the sign in here, Bitwarden is going to recognize that I have an entry, uh, I stored a password, and it automatically filled it in. So that's how easy it is to, uh, to use there. And if I was creating a brand new Starbucks account uh, for the first time and I had unlocked Bitwarden, Bitwarden would ask if I wanted to save that information about Starbucks and create a new entry in the password manager. So it uh, makes it nice to work with. 
The other thing you can do, so Bitwarden is just a little pop-up here. So right now it's a, a little pop-up that you can do most of your things there. If you want to pop it up in a separate window, there's a little icon here. Pop it out and do a new window. Now it's a new window, so that window will stay here. Uh, let's size this down a little bit. So now, now this window doesn't go away. Uh, I can do things uh, that way if if that's the way you want to operate or if that's the way you want to work with it as a separate window, you can. Uh, so it's up to you uh, how you how you work with it. Uh, let's see. Now this is this is what it looks like in Chrome. Uh, you can put it. Uh, obviously, we talked about it being available on all different platforms and apps. Uh, there's an app for it uh, in uh, iOS and Apple and Android. And uh, uh, when you're on those devices, you can use the facial recognition and uh, pass or fingerprint to as as in addition to your master password. So I don't even have to enter in my master, master password on those devices to get into Bitwarden to be able to see the information. Okay, so let me go back here. Okay, uh, these, uh, I won't go into too much detail, but uh, I showed where there you can change the settings in Bitwarden, and these are recommendations that I recommend. You can go in and change the uh, setting to a vault and timeout. Uh, I set mine to an hour uh, because I don't want to have to keep logging on. Uh, if I'm using my computer for a period of time, I don't want it every five minutes uh, of inactivity to have to put in that master password again. You can reset it. Uh, this is another setting. So if, uh, if you do tend to... Uh, uh, copy stuff into the clipboard and then paste it uh, in another application or somewhere. Uh, this will clear the kip clipboard. After five minutes, it'll clear the clipboard so that, let's say, uh, uh, somebody else uh, started using the computer, you wouldn't have passwords or that in the clipboard that somebody else might be able to see. And then this is turning on that uh, autofill capability. I believe by default it's not turned on. So if the first time you install it and it's not auto filling, make sure you go into the settings and turn it on. And I mentioned uh, before uh, to set up on your phone or tablet to use your fingerprint or face uh, login uh, in addition to the master password. Okay, that's it for uh, password managers. Let's talk about pass keys and why you need them. A passkey is a new way to sign in that works with pass works without passwords. It uses biometric information like your face ID, fingerprint, gesture, and PIN to secure the device. It's a, a standard that's now being promoted by Google, Apple, Microsoft, and the World Wide Web Consortium. So they all came together to try and solve the problem of passwords, and passkeys is uh, the best solution that we have today. A passkey consists of two cryptographic keys, a public key that's registered and stored with uh, the online service or app, and a private key that's stored on a device, such as a smartphone, tablet, or computer. When there's a data breach and a hacker gets their hands on a website's public key, the user's account is still locked because the hacker doesn't have access to your other device, your smartphone, your tablet, or your computer there. So uh, the information, uh, and, and I said when there is a data breach, not if there is a data breach, uh, a hacker will not have access like a password where somebody in China could then use that to get into your account. Let's look at a quick video. This is a one minute video. And let me click on this, and you should hear the video, too. Since the beginning, passwords have always been the protective gateway to the things you cherish and your online account security. 
but they're frustrating to create, hard to remember, and are easily hacked. In pursuit of a safe and secure passwordless future, Google, alongside the Fido Alliance, is rolling out passkeys to simplify sign-in across the web. Passkeys offer the strongest security with the convenience of unlocking your device. So signing in is as easy as glancing at your phone or scanning your fingerprint. And because they use cutting-edge cryptography to create a key that is unique between you and a specific app or website, they can't be stolen or fished by hackers the way that passwords can. Google is committed to making the internet safe for everyone, and passkeys are the simplest and most secure way to sign in across all your devices and platforms. Okay, that's a little information on uh, passkeys there. Uh, let's talk some more about them. Uh, what are passkeys and why do you need them? Passkeys can help you get around the issue of having to synchronize passwords between your devices. Uh, because again, uh, we, we have these two keys, one on the server, one on your device there. Uh, say you normally log into your Google account using your smartphone, but you want to log in using a laptop. No problem, even if the passkey isn't synchronized on the laptop, as long as the smartphone is within Bluetooth range of the laptop and the user approves the login, you can get in on any other device. What's even better, that path, the passkey itself isn't transferred between the smartphone and the laptop, uh, but after confirming the login, the user instead gets the opportunity to create a passkey on the laptop if they want. If they're going to be logging in again and again and again on that device, you can create a passkey on the laptop. Otherwise, if it was, uh, uh, let's say it was your uh, brother, brother's uh, laptop and you're only going to use it one time, you could log into that, you could uh, use your passkey from your phone, and uh, you're never going to store that passkey on your brother's account. Uh, no biometric information leaves your device. Instead, it's used to unlock the passkey on the device that it's stored. Passkeys will work on Windows 10 and above, uh, Mac uh, OS Ventura, Chrome, almost any version, current version of Chrome. Uh, any iPhone 16 or above, Android 9 or above. It also works with security keys and FIDO security, and it works with all the major browsers, Chrome, Safari, Edge. A uh, number of well-known websites uh, that support the technology include Adobe, Amazon, Google, GritHub, PayPal, uh, TikTok, Nintendo, WhatsApp, Shopify, eBay, Uber, and the Apple website too. I don't know why they didn't list that. There are uh, these are the early days of passkeys, though, and uh, more and more uh, websites and services are starting to support them. I put a link in here because this uh, is the official directory for uh, for the uh, companies and services that use passkeys. So you can go out here, and there's hundreds of uh, uh, companies and that that uh, now support pass keys as a way to get in. Let's go back here. Uh, the best way to experiment with pass keys is you can actually go out to a demo. So they created a demo, uh, and this is the link to the demo. If you look at the handout or look at the PDF file online, you'll be able to click on it, go out to the site, and use it. Uh, if you're ready to take the plunge, a great place to start is to secure your Google account with a passkey. Not only has Google made the process easy, but there's extensive documentation uh, all along the way there. We're a long, long way from the death of passwords. So you'll still have to have passwords because there's other uh, sites that don't use passkeys or you uh, may not, your device, you may have uh, issues where you don't want to use it, but passwords uh, certainly uh, will be around uh, for, for a while. <laughs> Bitwarden, that we just talked about as a password manager that I recommend, does support passkeys. Uh, Apple users can also use the Apple Wallet or Bitwarden to sync their passkeys to multiple devices.
Uh, these are some tips. Uh, never, never, never reuse passwords. Do, do, do. I'm going to go through these really fast because we've talked about these before. You can look at the handout uh, to see to see what's out there. Uh, so uh, we'll skip by those. And again, uh, be sure and look at the handout if you haven't seen them before or that. Uh, now, uh, with password managers and pass keys, you don't be don't have to be like this poor guy and be worried and forget your passwords and get locked out of accounts or have them hacked or anything like that. You've got the capability in your hands with these tools now. These are some additional links, uh, and there are a number of password managers out there. Uh, uh, Bitwarden is the highest rated free version, uh, not only by myself, but by PC Magazine and CNET and, and stuff like that. But uh, there are other password managers uh, that you can buy that have uh, slightly different features and functions. Okay, that's the end there. Let me stop sharing and we'll see if there's questions. If you do have a question, you can... Uh, uh, also, unmute yourself and, and show, and uh, so we can get at it that way. Let me see. Oh, let me first. Tom, this is Bonnie. Please disregard any questions that I have in the chat area. I want to keep going, especially with pass keys. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. If, uh, so let's uh, take a look here. Well. Uh, Mitch says, lots of useful things. Yes, I'm. Yeah, so uh, I've talked to a few people. A few people were reluctant to switch from LastPass, so they've been paying the yearly fee for LastPass. And uh, it really, like I say, it took me all of two minutes to change from LastPass to Bitwarden and save yourself the $45 a year or or uh, whatever there. So uh, now there are other password managers. If you've uh, signed up for Symantec or Norton or that, some of those uh, suites have a password manager in there. So uh, you do have that. Okay, John asks, must you have a master password for Bitwarden? That's, yes, you have to have a password for Bitwarden because that's uh, the only way you're gonna get in. Uh, and now, if you set up a pass key, you can use that uh, and that. But uh, the the password uh, for the time being is always always has to be set up because the first time you go in, that's the only way to get into your account and set up your account. Okay. Oh, maybe. Oh, I guess they were. I should have started at the top here. Uh, to their uh, course, interactive password manager tied to a specific browser. A password manager, when you put the extension in, uh, you're you're loading that for Chrome. If I also use Microsoft Edge, I'd go to Bitwarden and I'd install install the extension for Bitwarden. They're they both they'd both be using the same Bitwarden account, but you install it for the browser that you have there or use. If I used Firefox, I'd also install it for Firefox. Okay. Uh, plugin will allow you to reach your password. Let's see. Think that... Yeah, uh, Ed mentions a plugin. A plugin is uh, uh, some different packages call them different things. It's a it's a code, and uh, Chrome calls them extensions. Uh, since Microsoft Edge is built from the same base as Chrome, they're also called extensions there. But it's plugins uh, to the to the browser itself and to some of these things. When you when you have a phone or a tablet. Uh, there are apps, a Bitwarden app uh, that you'd install there. You cannot put extensions on a phone or a tablet in Chrome or that. So 
therefore you'd have to use the Bitwarden uh, app there. Yeah, and Ed, Ed mentions that. Don't know if I would trust. Uh, yeah, so Bonnie doesn't trust it. Uh, it's locked down. So like Bitwarden on my phone, uh, the only person that's going to get in there, they either have to know my master password to Bitwarden or they have to have my finger. So they would have had to have cut off my finger and use my uh, finger uh, to get in there. So nobody can steal my phone and get access to all my accounts. That's just life uh, uh, and that. So uh, let's see, same risk. Get on the PC. Let's see. Uh, there's a question Chris asks uh, How did you export uh, the passwords from LastPass? You log into your LastPass account uh, and you would have to log in on your browser uh, because some of the apps and some of the extensions, the LastPass uh, also has an extension. Those don't have all the features and functions. So I'm not sure if it's available in the LastPass extensions, but I know it's available when you go out to the LastPass website, log into your account, and uh, on the menu there, you'll see an option uh, to be uh, able to, to uh, export it. You export it, and then you'd go into Bitwarden and you'd do an import. And that's the way, oh, I guess I should turn on my camera. I forgot to turn on mine. But yeah, you do an export out of LastPath and an import uh, on Bitwarden. And it's a good, I, good idea, like I mentioned, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the export. Uh, you do want to be backing up this information. So I back up my uh, all my passwords, and I back them up to a flash drive. And that flash drive uh, is not connected to my computer. Uh, it's not a file that any hacker that ever got on my computer would be able to get. It's a flash drive that I keep in a safe. Uh, and uh, so I do have uh, that, and I do have it protected, and but I do have it backed up. Uh, and it's a good idea, just like any other file that's important to you, to save that information. Is there a manual online for help? Uh, actually, if you just go out to YouTube, you can see different videos. Uh, I'm not sure if you're talking about password managers or pass keys, but either one of them, it'll show you uh, how to use that. Bitwarden, good for financial accounts, 401ks. Uh, Bitwarden's good for every account that you have. So I have Fidelity, I have Vanguard, uh, I have a Schwab account. All of those are in my password manager and you any account, any password, and now any passkey that you have, you want it to be managed uh, by your password manager there. Oh, I guess up here, Apple has a passwords folder on my phone while sharing between non-Apple devices. Uh, may not, uh, yeah, because this also gives some of the functionality. Uh, yeah, the so, so there's all kinds of solutions. If you're using a browser, you've probably seen the prompt to save your password. There's all kinds of packages out there that uh, will attempt to save your accounts and passwords and information. Uh, certainly, most of those are better than paper and pencil and a notebook. But again, I go back to my comment of if you, if you want the best, use a password manager. And that password manager is going to give you more features and functions than these other that are just kind of built-in little functions that you have there. Also, it's a case of if I, uh, myself, I have an iPad, I have an Android phone, 
I have a laptop, I have a desktop. Uh, when I'm out and about, I may be logging into a, a friend's Apple computer, or I may be logging into somebody's Windows computer. I want a password manager, and I want stuff that'll work on any device, anytime, anywhere. And if you're using an Apple solution, whether it's whether it's the Apple Wallet or, or things like that, guess what? That's not available on all devices. It's only available on Apple devices. And, and so uh, if you've heard me talk before, uh, I'm a proponent and I do like Apple products. I have Apple stock. I have Microsoft stock. I, I do like uh, uh, the companies. Uh, and I want a solution that's going to work good for everybody there. Okay, yeah, Mitch mentions that uh, the Apple Keychain is a password manager shared across Apple, Apple devices, only Apple. Now, again, I, I use Bitwarden and I use it on my iPad. And it shares those pass keys across all of my devices, whether they're Apple or non-Apple. But if all you have is Apple devices and you're never going to log into a Windows machine or need that on a Windows machine, then you could do it. And there's very few people that I'd put into that category. Because even if you have a Mac and an iPad and an iPhone, uh, let's say you go on vacation uh, down to Cancun. And in the business center, they don't have a Macintosh. They've got a Windows machine. I can use Bitwarden on any machine, anywhere, at any time. Okay. Uh, Bonnie says, I think we need another full meeting on... Pass keys, uh, that's the reason I put the demo out there. Uh, and certainly, you can, when you, when you uh, let's say you have a Google account and you go out and you secure it with a pass key, that does not get rid of your password. So you don't have to convert all your devices uh, immediately to pass keys. You can uh, create a pass key and then use it on that device and then, uh, change another device to use pass keys and another device to use pass keys. Uh, you can do it at your own pace, at your own time uh, uh, there. Okay. Let's see, just exported a CVS. Yeah, so Chris did find the export there. Last time I went to Amazon, it asked me to set up a passkey and I did not feel that I understood it well enough. Uh, and that's why all these services are, are promoting passkeys because it, is, it isn't just an Apple solution. It's not just a Google solution. It's all devices solution there. And uh, because of the, uh, uh, the two keys, uh, the private key and the, that's on your device and the public key that's up on, in this case, Amazon, if Amazon is hacked, a hacker is only going to get half of the key. They can't get into your Amazon account. The only way they'd be able to get into your Amazon account is if they had your device. So that's that's the main uh, security feature of a pass key there is uh, somebody in China or somebody in India or somebody in Russia that uh, is using uh, or that has breached uh, passwords or that, uh, yeah, they can log into account from anywhere. But with pass keys, they can't. They need the device there to be able to log in. And so that's what makes it much more secure. Uh, the companies did not want to make it difficult for people to use. That's why if you have your device, let's say like the phone, uh, for me to log into my Amazon account on my phone, uh, I click on that, and what's going to pop up? It's going to pop up uh, to scan my face or to scan my fingerprint. That's all I do. I don't have to put in an account. I don't have to put in a password. 
I don't have to use multi-factor authentication. I don't have to use any of that. It, it, uses, it used the pass keys, which are stored on the different devices there. Uh, pass keys are specific between, uh, so a pass key is, uh, if I set up a pass key for Google, that's only good for doing Google, for logging into Google. I also need to set up a pass key for Amazon. I also need to set up a pass key for US Bank. I also need to set up a pass key for whatever service I'm logging into, you set up these pass keys. Uh, so the Google, the Google pass key is good to get into Google. It, it, because, it, yeah, that's, that's just the way that it's set up there. Now, now, uh, uh, it may have gotten a little confusing, and I was certainly confused too, is uh, you hear people uh, syncing, syncing of pass keys. And the syncing of pass keys, that's what Bitwarden can do, is it can sync these pass keys amongst multiple devices. You don't have to use that feature if you don't do not want to. But the syncing just means that uh, normally if I didn't sync them and I had an iPad and I had an iPhone and I had an Android phone, I'd set up three separate pass keys for each of those devices to connect to, let's say, the Amazon service. But because I can share them, I can set up one pass key and I can share one pass key between three different devices there. But you can you could use it either any any way that you want. Okay. And if you do have more questions on the pass keys and, and how stuff works or password managers. Uh, certainly, we have uh, uh, March 5th, uh, we'll have the next Q&A, uh, so uh, certainly welcome to, uh, to uh, uh, tune in then or ask questions then. Uh, but I recommend that you start playing with the stuff. But first, if you don't have a password manager, get yourself a password manager. So that should be the first thing that you do. And then... Uh, then Start converting some of your accounts to pass keys there uh, because pass keys are going to make your life easier, uh, easier to work with there. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, I think we've gone a little bit over there, but uh, yeah, if you do have any, uh, March 5th will be our next uh, question and answer, or if you do have some stuff, you could send me an email or, or leave a message out on the website and we'll get back to you. But uh, uh, the, the, the tools are out there for you to protect yourself. The tools are out there to make it very easy for you to, uh, to log in and secure yourself. So. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, people will start using some of these things and, and stuff like that. Okay. Thanks for joining and, uh, we'll catch you next time then. Looks like Kurt had a question. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't see Kurt. Kurt raise his hand. Yeah, Kurt. Um, can you hear me? I don't even know if my microphone is on. I can yep, hear you there, Kurt. Okay. Um, it, it's a daunting task to think about moving passwords because I was just looking personally, as you noted, I've, I've got over 100. I looked at our joint passwords for the family, and that's approaching 400. They happen to be in a Word file, in a Word table right now. Would something like that conceivably be able to import into Bitwarden? Nope. No, uh, when I talk about importing and exporting, if uh, you're familiar with what's called CVS, uh, uh, yes. it's, a, or it's comma delimited, uh, but with, those, uh, with the comma delimited, there's specific fields in a specific order. 
And so you just can't take a Word document and import it or even a spreadsheet and import it unless that spreadsheet has the exact columns in the exact order as a CVS. So, and, and I mean, if you want to see what it looks like, export it out of one of the services. Because if you're using any service at all today, LastPass, if you put them into Chrome, into its password manager, so Chrome has its own password manager, you can export the, the uh, accounts and passwords out of that today and put it in a CVS and you can see what that format looks like. If you can manipulate your file that you manually have in a Word document or that into that format, you could import it. But I'll tell you, you're, you're probably wasting a lot of time there because all you okay. have to do is, is install a package like Bitwarden and begin logging into your sites. When you log into the site, it's going to say, do you want to save it for Starbucks? And it's going to grab it off of the screen and it's going to grab the information that you put in and create an entry in Bitwarden. So that may okay. be the easiest way for you to get going there. Certainly the spreadsheet. Um, had, had its CSVs comma separated variable, like even going back to Lotus one two three, that was the standard format to import and export. But it has to be in the order that the package is recognized. So you can't yep. just take a a spreadsheet and you, all spreadsheets can be saved as as comma delimited, but it has to be that order. And uh, uh, so yep. yeah. So Column one, column two, column three. Yep, yep. Uh, does that make sense? So or, is or? It, yeah, it does. I'm wondering, is it conceivable that you could take the Word table, copy it into Excel, which it will do nicely, and then you could save it as the CSV, but... How would I, how would I know what form the CSV is to be in? What order? That's that's the that's the trouble. The CSV has to be the industry standard format for for importing and exporting passwords. So you saw uh, all those fields that I uh, talked about in Bitwarden. Those are yes. all fields: the notes, the URLs. Uh, autofill, uh, all this stuff is is uh, our fields within the comma delimited file. You'd have to add those files into your, and like I said, all you have to do is just start using your computer and install it and it'll start recording. So today you're okay. having to manually enter those in. And, and that's all you do is install Bitwarden, and I'd go out to Starbucks, I'd manually type in my account and password. Bitwarden's going to say, I'll create, I'll create an entry for it. Okay, perfect. Very good. Thank okay. you very much. Tom, I got an email today, coincidentally, which is why I decided to, <laughs> to join you today. Um, from actually from LastPass saying that the uh, version of LastPass on my Mac will soon no longer be supported to, to re remove it and go to the App Store and uh, load another one. Do you have any suggestions on That's why I wanted to back up my, my passwords because I'm always a skeptic. Do you have any uh, advice in, for me in going through that process? Well, just like you, certainly the export, uh, export it there. And then uh, in my case, I'd recommend installing Bitwarden and import it. And you'll be up and going in a matter of minutes. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's there's really nothing that you have to do there because the package will export it in the correct format that Bitwarden can bring it in at. And uh, you'll you'll have everything available there. Okay, thank you. And now that you you bring up an interesting question because I've had other people uh, ask me about scams where they get an email like that saying uh, uh, your your version of uh, uh, of LastPass is expired. Uh, we're going to charge you two hundred ninety eight dollars 
uh, call this number if you don't want it uh, automatically done. And so uh, you you have to be careful. Some people will will uh, think that they're extending their uh, license for uh, whether it's uh, LastPass or uh, Norton antivirus or something like that when it might be a scam there. And there wasn't anything asking me for money, so <laughs> that's 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 good there, and and that's understandable that uh, uh, none of these companies uh, want to support a version forever because they've obviously made changes to the way that the packages work, so they do want uh, people up on more current packages. Okay. I was surprised there wasn't an automatic update feature like on, on you know Excel or something. So it's interesting. You have to remove it and then install a new version. So a number of the packages like this do not do automatic updates because the trouble with an automatic update is let's say they did an automatic update and it was not compatible with your iOS version with the with what you have you would be out of luck you would not be able to get into your account and i had another person who forgot their master password and last pass and contacted the company called up the company and said i want to reset my account and they said we do not reset accounts uh, if you don't know the password you can't get into the account. It can't be reset. Uh, uh, you're just going to have to create a brand new account and start over. I wish I will say I had heart palpitations at one time because I forgot my master password. There is a recovery process, and for and fortunately, I was able to complete successfully the recovery process. But it was not without great anxiety. <laughs> Well, what I tell people like with Bitwarden is typically people have a phone and you have a tablet and that. Uh, so you'll see, when I gave my demo on this laptop here, well, I had to put in my master password because this is a cheap laptop, doesn't have a fingerprint reader or, or facial scan. But on my phone, I have a fingerprint reader, so that's why I recommend putting Bit, uh, Bitwarden on your phone. Now I can get into Bitwarden, and one of the entries I have in Bitwarden is my Bitwarden password. <laughs> so if I do forget it uh, or that, I can always use my phone, use my fingerprint, get in, and see my password that way. Yeah, I have a LastPass entry in my uh, in LastPass too. <laughs> yeah, and that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> and and just like backing up, uh, you know, I'll I'll back up my passwords. My passwords, I'll I'll maybe back up two at most three times a year. I'm not doing it every month because I don't need to, but. You know, certainly some of the accounts, uh, whether it's bank accounts or, or email accounts, those you may want to be changing once a year or, or at least once every couple of years. Uh, uh, so, you know, what, whatever <laughs> schedule you're on for uh, resetting some of the passwords. Uh, that's authentication on, on all anything financial, obviously. So. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Nice and sunny out there. Bye. Thanks, Tom. Bye, everyone.